Greetings, everyone. Welcome to lecture number 32. Um, we're going to continue our discussion of waves. There is actually two things I want to do in this lecture. I want to hand wave, talk about something called Doppler effect, and then talk about the stability of matter, just to tell you about a mystery. But before we do that, let's just review from the last lecture. Let's do a couple of uh, very simple problems dealing with the electromagnetic spectrum and the speed of an electromagnetic wave. Remember, it's a constant. C is the frequency times the wavelength, and it's an inverse relation, right? So if the frequency doubles, the wavelength halves, and vice versa. Okay, so if one increases, the other decreases appropriately. All right, so let's look at this problem. The wavelength of a certain electromagnetic wave is 15 nanometers. You all know what that is. What is the frequency of this wave? Okay, so we know it's an electromagnetic wave. So we know the frequency is 15, or the, uh, uh, the wavelength is 15 nanometers. We know the speed. It's always the speed of light, C. Okay, and now we want to find the frequency. So hopefully you've done this at home. C is F lambda. The frequency is C over lambda, and we're just plugging in numbers, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the frequency, uh, the wavelength was 15 nanometers, 15 times 10 to the minus 9. You do the math on your calculators, and I get a frequency of 2 times 10 to the 16th hertz. Okay, hopefully we all agree with that. All right, second quick problem review. A uh, particular EM wave, once again, we know the speed is the speed of light, has a frequency of 20 times 10 to the 18th hertz. What is the wavelength? So in this problem, we know C, we know F, and so we want to find lambda. Okay, very simple. Once again, it's just a plug-in problem. C, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and the frequency was 20 times 10 to the 18th hertz, and do the math, and I come up with 1.5 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, okay? So that's very energetic. All right, so enough of that. Let's uh, get to something, two topics I want to talk about. One is uh, the Doppler effect, and I'm sure you've all heard of this when you watch the weather or, or police radar all deals with something called the Doppler effect. Let's just talk about it real quick. I call it an accordion effect because it's like a squeezing or spreading of waves. Right? If we're talking about sound waves right now, the speed of sound is approximately 343 meters per second. You do not need to learn that number, okay? But it's a constant, pretty much a constant. Depends on temperature, pressure, but for us, it's a constant. If it's a constant, then V, the speed, is C, uh, is frequency times wavelength, okay? So we have this inverse relation once again. Now imagine you have a car or 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 uh, something putting out a, a signal, a sound signal, okay? I put a car or, an, you know, something with a, a, a police car or a siren, okay? And there's my nose, and I'm just hanging out, okay? Now the waves are coming, the waves are coming, the waves are coming, okay? Frequency times wavelength is the speed. Now imagine the source is coming towards you. If it's coming towards you, what's happening to the waves? Well, they're no longer a given wavelength. As the source comes closer to you, the waves get pushed together, right? The wavelength gets smushed, like in an accordion. As the wavelength gets smaller, inverse relation, the frequency goes up. So when you hear a, 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 an ambulance coming towards you, the pitch, which is the same as frequency, you hear something going ding, 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 very, very, very high, right? The pitch gets higher. Why is that? Once again, if an object comes towards you or if you go towards the object, you're smushing, essentially smushing the waves or, or condensing the wavelength. If the wavelength gets smaller, the frequency goes up. Okay? And the inverse relation also holds. Once again, if a train or an ambulance goes past you, what happens is the waves tend to get spread out, like an accordion spread out when it pulls away. So the wavelength gets larger. If the wavelength lambda gets larger, the frequency F gets smaller. Okay, 
So a larger wavelength, smaller, smaller frequency. So again, when something comes towards you, nye, 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 the pitch frequency gets very high. And as it goes away, nye, 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 it kind of gets spread out. Okay. And that's the Doppler effect. How much the frequency changes or the wavelength changes tells you how fast something's going. So when the police use radar, they put out a signal at a certain frequency. It bounces off your car, comes back. And depending on how much it shifts, that tells them how fast you're going. OK, so that's the idea behind radar. And we use this to uh, look at the sky. Also, it's called the redshift of the universe. OK, remember Roy G. Biv? You remember that on the spectrum? Red is towards the longer wavelengths. When we look at the sky and the universe and all the planets, uh, well, all the galaxies, and distant objects, what well, we notice that everything has a longer wavelength, in other words, shifted towards the red. And what this means is that the universe itself is expanding. Everything's going apart. It's like baking a raisin bread, right? And it's in the oven. As the oven heats up, the distance between each raisin increases. So that's our universe. It's increasing. It's spreading out. Okay. And this is called the Doppler effect or, or the, uh, the red shift of the universe because everything shifted towards the red and that tells us that the universe is expanding now the last thing i want to mention is something called standing waves okay and this is this is just kind of extra and uh it's it's just something remember we spoke about um uh pluses and minus charges and they they attract okay well the size of a proton is about 2,000 times the size of an electron. So let's talk about that for one second. Take the most basic element on the periodic table, hydrogen. One proton, one electron. The proton is about 2,000 times larger than the electron. Okay, So 2,000 times larger is like having, say, a one-pound object that's the electron. 2,000 pounds is your car. So this is an electron. Your car is the proton. Okay, so it's the electrons that are so much lighter. So if you put a force on this system, what's going to move? The, new, the proton, the thing that's 2,000 times heavier than this, or the light object? And again, that's why electricity uh, deals with electrons moving and not nuclei, because nuclei also have neutrons, which are also 2,000 times heavier than the electron. All right, let's talk about why matter is stable, okay? This is, this is a crazy question. Again, if this is my huge proton, I'm not drawing this to distance. I'll talk about this in another lecture. And there's my electron. Well, we know the minus is attracted to the plus, And the question is, right? So here's my nucleus. Uh, here's my proton. And there's my dot. That's a dot. That's the electron. And this is big plus. How come the electron doesn't fall into the nucleus? In other words, why do we exist? Why is there stable matter? Why don't all electrons just fall in to the nucleus? Remember, in an earlier lecture, we said everything in nature wants to be in its lowest energy state. So this is a great question. This is a question physicists and chemists asked themselves 100 years ago. Why is nature stable what's going on and it was uh niels bohr and a bunch of very smart people 100 years ago over 100 years ago who figured this out okay now in intro physics lab yes even in our intro physics lab we do an experiment with a string and what happens is you take a string a string okay All right, and, and this string, here's a, here's a string on the table, and it's connected to something, okay? And what we have here is an object that vibrates the string, okay? So the string can vibrate, and when it vibrates, it comes back. And in general, just like in a swimming pool, you get a mishmash. Remember mishmash? So you get constructive interference, and you get destructive interference. Now, I want to show you something. If you wiggle this stuff at a certain frequency, you wiggle a string at a particular frequency, and the length of the string is L, right? And there's my string. And you wiggle it at a certain frequency. It turns out you can get waves that do not come back and 
destructively interfere, but only constructively interfere. So watch this. I can get a wave formed on here that looks like that. Just like that. And it stands there forever. Doesn't lose energy. Or I can get a wave. Well, I'm just going to draw the string like this. Um, or I can get a wave that's exactly like that. Perfect. Doesn't change. Does not lose energy. Or you can make any multiple of this by changing the frequency. Okay, I get one, two, three. Okay, something like this. And it just stays there. Does not lose energy. These are called standing waves. Standing waves do not lose energy. Okay? And so what I want to tell you is electrons, what we think of electrons, and I'll talk more about this later on, Electrons are behaving, electrons are behaving like standing waves. That's crazy, right? Electrons are particles. How could they behave like standing waves? So let's look at, here's a nucleus. Okay, I'm just going to draw something like this as an orbit. The electron is actually making some kind of standing wave, some kind of pattern where it does not lose energy. It is not a particle zipping around like a planet. So what is an electron? Uh, one of the first lectures I told you, I don't know what an electron is. I know what the mathematics is. I can describe everything. But what is an electron? It's a great question. Here we're saying electrons behave as waves. Right? We know that electrons are also particles. So what are electrons? Are electrons particles or are they waves? Okay. Well, uh, they're both. All right. And this has to do with something called, I'll write it up here. It's called the wave particle duality wave particle duality it's almost like a schizophrenia okay that things behave different ways so is an electron a wave or a particle the answer is it depends on how you measure it i'll give you a very poor example your little child your little daughter with the parents child is a brat, ex -buh. doesn't listen to anything, doesn't eat their food. Then you have your neighbor or a relative watch the child, and little Susie's a perfect angel, does everything, eats everything, you know, does her homework, amazing. So what is Susie? Is she bad with, uh, like she is with you, or is she a perfect angel? The answer is it depends on how you interact with it. So if you're not interacting with Susie, is she good or is she bad? Well, in a Zen sense, she just is. OK, and that's what we say about electrons. Are they particles or are they waves? And we say they just are. Now, you remember we talked about electromagnetic radiation. We said it's wiggling electric and magnetic fields. And we said that these uh, electromagnetic waves can interfere and that interference is a wave property. Well, electromagnetic radiation also follows this wave particle duality. OK, so Einstein, A.E., he said that light or EM radiation, right, which we know are waves, can actually behave as particles. And these particles are called photons. These are particles of light. Okay, photons. Photons have no mass and no electric charge, but they carry energy. So Einstein said waves can behave like particles. Waves can behave like particles. Right? Well, there was a scientist, Prince de Broglie, de Broglie. He said, well, if waves can behave like particles, I'll put particles here. Then why can't particles behave like waves? And this is exactly what we said about the electron. The electron's a particle, but it's behaving like a wave. So 
Waves can behave like particles and particles can behave like waves. And if you ask the question, what is light or what is electromagnetic radiation? Is it a wave or is it a, a photon? Is it a particle? The answer is it just is. How you measure it determines how it will behave. OK, an example, a perfect example of this wave particle duality. Now, everybody's taking biology. They know about a microscope. How does a microscope function? Well, it takes visible light, electromagnetic radiation from the visible part of the spectrum, Roy G. Biv. And what does it do? The light gets magnified, passes through a lens and right refracts. Refraction is a wave property, right? We have So we have microscopes and it uses refraction, a wave particle.